so excited to be here with you tonight. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Kim Bass, and I definitely feel honored that you guys asked me to come speak tonight in front of you. Some of you guys might know my husband. We're going to flash his picture up. There he is. He's carrying me. But he's even better in person. He's sitting right over there. Um, he helped launch Epic Slow back in 2002. And we, during the icebreaker, we learned that some of the folks back in 2002 were only two years old. <laughs> Joe and I met on Epic Hawaii Summer Project in 2005. We started dating a couple years after that, and then we got married in 2008. So it will be 12 years of marriage for us this year. <laughs> Some of you guys might know my kids, Micah and Adrian. If they look familiar to you, they actually helped narrate your Christmas video back in December. Micah is our son. He is eight years old and in third grade. And Avery is our daughter. She is six and she's in first grade. A little bit more about me. I'm currently a stay-at-home mom, but before I became a stay-at-home mom, I worked in human resources for a couple tech companies in San Jose. After I had Micah, I did go back to work because I was struggling with postpartum depression and I just couldn't get myself to be at home with him full time. But I think God really healed me in the year that I did go back to work, and I just felt called to be at home. So it will be eight years of being at home with the kids, and I haven't looked back since. And besides being a mom, I, we also Joe and I also lead a ministry called Epic Legacy. Um, we started it when postgrads were um, coming up to the Bay, and they were looking for community um, as they transitioned into the work world. So Epic Legacy is just a ministry to help that transition and also to provide like support and community um, as they plug into churches and get the group going with working full time. So I was invited to speak about relationships with family tonight. And I think it's such an important topic because family is mentioned everywhere in the Bible. Like if you just flip back to even the Adam and Eve days, like they made babies and those babies made babies and everyone is just interconnected in the Bible. And I think God is very purposeful in putting a lot of emphasis in family connections. Um, and when we think about relationships, like all the relationships that we have in our lives, there are many relationships that we get to choose. Like we get to choose our friendships. We get to choose who we date. We even get to choose who we get to marry. But the relationships that we don't get to choose are the relationships that we have with our parents and family members. And it's not surprising that the relationships that we don't get to choose are often the ones that are the hardest in our lives. And so when I was thinking about what to share tonight, I wanted to share about Joe and the kids because I just love talking about them. They bring a lot of joy in my life. But as I was preparing for this message, I really felt God just tugging on my heart and telling me to share some of the most burdensome, hardest, most difficult relationships that I've had in my life, and those involve my parents. Um, when I think about my upbringing and my childhood, you know, it just makes me feel very sad and resentful. When, you know, when I think about my upbringing, sometimes my mind starts spiraling, I start getting anxiety, um, because I keep going back to past hurts and pains that I had shared with my parents. Um, I think about how guilty and embarrassed I feel sometimes, because I hated the fact that my parents compared me to their friends' kids, but at the same time, I also compared my parents to my friends' parents, wishing that they could be more like them. So tonight, I pray that God will use my story to help encourage you guys when we're faced with tough and broken relationships. And I hope that my journey of forgiveness and reconciliation can be an encouragement to those of you tonight who might feel like you can resonate with some of the stuff I'm sharing. So, before I get started, let me go ahead and pray us in. Father God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for bringing all of us here. Thank you for Epic Slow and just your faithfulness in this ministry. Tonight, we're about to dive into a topic that might not be easy for some of us here. It might bring back some painful memories. It might give us a reality check of just how we've been doing with our parents and our family members. Um, 
So I pray that you will just meet with us here. Pray that any of the feelings that are stirring up in our hearts right now as we reflect on our upbringing, um, may you just bring peace in those um, moments. And I pray that you will just really guide us and yeah, just be, the, be in our presence tonight. And I pray all these in your name, amen. So a little bit more about me. I'm a first or second generation Chinese American, depending on how you count it. My dad immigrated to the United States with his brother and sister, my aunt and uncle, and they studied at San Jose State. And my dad received his engineering degree, went back to Macau, which is where his family is from, um, to visit family, and then he met my mom there. And they dated for a few months, they got married shortly after that, and then shortly after that, they had me. So the three of us immigrated to the United States together when I was about a month old. Um, and they settled in San Jose, and Soon after, my brother was born, and a couple years later after that, my sister was born. So my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and she raised all three of us on her own, without knowing much English and without having any community. You know, growing up, my parents fought a lot, and I just watched my mom become a really passive person. And my dad, who is not good at owning up to his mistakes, would constantly just blame shift on my mom and um, and just kind of put a lot of burden on her, and it was just really frustrating for me to see that growing up, where my mom just couldn't stand up for herself, and she just took the brunt of whatever he gave her. Um, I didn't grow up, actually, in a Christian household, but remember how my dad's two siblings came to the United States with him to study at San Jose State? They were actually approached by a couple people on campus, and those people share the gospel to my aunt and uncle. And my aunt and uncle accepted Christ in college. And I just love how college ministry has just played a pivotal role in my family history. Um, because if it wasn't for those students witnessing to my aunt and uncle, I don't know if I'd be standing here in front of you guys tonight. Um, my uncle was the one who brought my mom to church and she accepted Christ. And then soon after, my siblings and I went to church. But my dad to this day is not a believer and I'm not going to lie, it was just very difficult growing up in a household when both parents were unequally yoked. So while my parents tried their best to just take care of us, the reality was they were just very emotionally absent. And that's a picture of my mom and dad um, and our family at my brother's wedding last year. My parents just never really displayed any excitement for any of the accomplishments that I've made. Um, they were not happy. They didn't. They were not excited when Joe proposed to me. They just had very blank faces. When we announced both of our pregnancies, they just didn't really respond to them either. One memory that I carried in me for a really long time was back in third grade. I submitted artwork for this huge contest that they were holding in the San Jose School District where there were like hundreds of submissions. It was for this children's book that was coming out and then you could enter the contest to win like, I don't know, I think it was like the marketing poster for the children's book, but it was kind of a big deal. So I submitted my artwork and I ended up winning first place, which I was really excited about. And I remember going to tell my parents that I won the contest and they just kind of brushed it off and they didn't make it a big deal. And I felt very misunderstood at that moment and I felt very lonely. And I remember my third grade teacher approaching me the next day and telling me like, hey, you're gonna receive an award by the author of the book along with some school officials, so you should ask your parents to take you to the ceremony next week. So I went back to my parents, I told them all the details, and my parents just didn't wanna go to support me. So instead, my third grade teacher came to my house, picked me up, and took me to the ceremony. And I just remember receiving the award in front of a bunch of people I didn't know. There were, it was like a sea of faces that I couldn't recognize, and I just yearned for my parents to sit in the crowd and just be there for me. Um, this is just one, one of many moments where my parents would react to things in very stoic or nonchalant ways. And although I can't really recall all of my childhood memories, like to the T, I can recall all the feelings that I took away from each moment that I experienced. And some of the feelings that were the strongest in me, that I carried in me for a really long time, were shame, fear, and resentment. 
So with shame, maybe some of you guys have also experienced this where your parents compared you to their friend's kids. Oftentimes, when you're present in the conversation, that's what my parents did all the time. Whenever we got together with other families, my parents would praise their friend's kids in front of me, um, and they would compare everything. Like, they would compare our grades, they would compare our weight, they would compare our complexion. Like, pretty much everything was put under the microscope. And I'm not gonna lie, like, over time, it was just really hard for me to look at myself in the mirror um, and to accept myself for who I was. The second feeling that I carried in me for a really long time was fear. And even though my parents were very emotionally absent, my dad was very quick to anger. And I've come to realize that perhaps my dad was really quick to anger because he didn't know how to process his emotions very well. So he would just let them build up and then one day he'll just burst and he would just lash out. So there were, those moments usually happen during dinner time where the first half of dinner you're eating and my parents don't say a word and then all of a sudden my dad will just start screaming at the top of his lungs, just sharing about how he's like disappointed in me or the fact that I'm not living up to these expectations that he had for me. And he would make sure that every family member was present when it happened so that my siblings also understood where he was coming from. And living in fear caused me to be a really unhealthy people pleaser because I was constantly worried about how others viewed me. And I can't get into details tonight because we don't have enough time. But I think fear was like a big reason to why I was in like a physically and abuse and a emotionally abusive dating relationship for four years, from my teenage years in that and it carried into my college years. And I think fear enabled me to drag that relationship on for four too many years. And I just want to insert like a side note for any ladies who are in the crowd right now who maybe in an abusive relationship or have gone through it, I just want to remind you right now that you are a beloved daughter of God and you are seen and you are known and you are loved. And you don't have to hide your relationship just because you feel ashamed or embarrassed by it. Um, I just really feel like God wants to let you know that you are so loved and pursued after. And I'm more than happy to talk to you after our talk tonight or after my talk tonight if you need someone to talk to you or I encourage you to to reach out to someone that you can trust because you're not alone in this. So just wanted to insert that. So going back to my feelings, I shared about shame, fear, and my last feeling that I carried in me for a really long time was resentment. And I carried a lot of resentment towards my parents for just not having wisdom and discernment. I would be so jealous when my friends would tell me that they were able to go to their parents for college advice, for dating advice, for financial advice, like I didn't have any of that growing up. My parents just didn't put a lot of time in leaning into understanding me or wanting to support me. So I just felt like, like they just didn't care for me. Um, they just wanted to take care of me in terms of just making sure I was healthy and I was fed. But other than that, they just didn't really provide a lot of emotional support. And I especially felt a lot of resentment um, when my dad told me that I could only apply to one college which was his alma mater, San Jose State. And luckily I got in because I was literally the only college that I could apply for. And my parents told me that I couldn't live away from home. I had to just commute there. And it wasn't too far of a commute because we lived in Fremont at the time. So it was about like 25 minutes. But at the same time, I felt like my parents kind of took away my college experience. Um, and I was just very envious of my parents who were able to move away for four years and just you know, live their lives as college students. So I think carrying resentment in me for so long, it just, I don't know. Like, I think I just stopped pursuing after my parents, connecting with them, wanting to get to know them better. And over time, my desire to hang out with them just lessened. And it took me 30 years um, to recognize that my childhood feelings were affecting my present life and that they were kind of just like warping my view of a lot of things that God was blessing me with. Like when it came to shame, as a girl who received a lot of comments about her physical appearance from her parents, I just became obsessed with it. So when I was in my teenage years and in my college years, I fluctuated a lot in weight. If 
I couldn't find pictures because I didn't have Facebook until like I was a senior in college. But I wish I could show you just like my weight fluctuations because it was crazy. Like I would go on these crash diets because my parents told me I was too fat. And then I wasn't getting enough nutrition, so my body was screaming more for more food, and it just affected my endorphin levels, and I would just get really depressed, and I would start drinking a bunch of alcohol, and the alcohol consumption would make me gain a bunch of weight again. And then I would go on another crash diet, and it was just this vicious cycle, and I was just so unsatisfied with myself. Um, when it came to fear, I just felt like I spent a lot of my adult years saying yes to a lot of things. Um, Joe really had to put his foot down when he looked at her shared Google calendar and saw that it was filled up with so many events. He one day said, uh, you need to learn how to say no to things. And I didn't realize that that was my way of coping with fear because I was so worried about disappointing people, like the way that I was disappointing my dad all my life. And so um, I became like a really unhealthy people pleaser and I just kind of lost myself because I just kept saying yes to everything. With resentment, carrying resentment was just such a familiar feeling that it was just a part of me. And I had like a huge falling out with one of my best friends in my early 20s. And I remember I just had so much bitterness and resentment towards her, even though God had acted right away and had start, started changing her heart and changing our circumstances. And I just couldn't see it because I just couldn't let go of my resentment towards her. And over time, I started to have a really hard time trusting in people and trusting my journey and trusting in God um, because I was just holding on to these feelings so tightly for my upbringing. So about two years ago, um, I just went through a really dark season and I just remember feeling really exhausted from carrying these three feelings in me for so long. I was tired of it affecting my marriage. I was tired of it affecting like my relationship with my kids. And I wanted to feel free, but I felt really trapped. And I think, you know, from just being burdened by my own feelings, I experienced panic attacks. And that was when I knew I needed to make some drastic changes, but it was up to me. Right? Like, I think God gives us convictions in our hearts, but he loves us so much that he wants us to agree to doing something with those convictions. He just doesn't, he doesn't force it on us. He just plants it in our heart and then he waits for us to respond. So there's this really awesome um, pastor in Orange County. Her name is Bianca Olthoff. She's a little firecracker. And she had recently quoted that a conqueror never wins unless if a conqueror never wins if the conqueror never fights. And I realized that I need to fight for freedom, but more importantly, I need to fight for freedom in Christ. And my favorite verse in the Bible is John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But I wasn't sure if I was really spending enough time figuring out what those truths were in my life. So, you know, I spent a lot of time listing out action steps and figuring out a plan to move forward over and over again, but I wasn't being prayerful enough through that, so I just left feeling, like, pretty overwhelmed. And it wasn't until God intervened during one of my 3 a.m. panic attacks where he gently told me, like, you know, Kim, like, this burden is not for you to bear. And there's nothing shameful with seeking help, so... So I started going to therapy, and I was a hesitant at first because the idea of spending money to dig deep in my heart with some random stranger <laughs> sitting across from me, just, I don't know, I just felt like really overwhelmed by, by that idea initially, but it ended up being one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. Um, from just going through therapy, I learned that I need to view myself with more compassion. Um, I learned that a lot of difficult situations I was going through, the decision making behind it was from the wounded self, my childhood self that I had carried in me for so long and I let it dictate a lot of my decisions. Um, my therapist taught me to train my brain to recognize like moments of shame quicker and when, there's, when those triggering moments happen, which can happen anytime, it can happen at 3 a.m., it can happen while you're going to school, in the car, like, 
um, my therapist said, you know, you know, Kim, it's okay to recognize those moments, and instead of letting it just kind of take over your mind and your heart, like quickly give it to God. Like, give it to God, and in return, ask him to exchange it for his grace and his truths and his compassion. And it shouldn't just be like a morning Devo like exchange. It should be like an ongoing thing throughout your day. Because if you develop this habit of just doing a constant exchange with God and asking for his grace and his truths, then it, it can easily transfer to other areas of your life in a positive way. So... I think having that constant motion in my mind just really helped me become more compassionate and more gracious to myself. And in that sense, I was able to spread some of that compassion over to my difficult relationships, including to my parents. I learned that I was setting goals too high when it came to my journey of reconciling and forgiving my parents. Um, before I saw myself like here and my parents here and I thought my end goal was for us to just be like this, like super tight at the end like that's what God has had called us you know to do but I later realized that that's kind of an unhealthy goal because at the end of the day it's not guaranteed that my parents are going to change um, a healthier mindset is to just become closer to them and just shoot for that without losing yourself in the process. Because I think sometimes, especially as an Asian American, we feel like we just have to lose ourselves and to not embrace our individualism um, just to please other people, especially our parents. But God created us to be very unique individuals and he loves every bit of us. So when it comes to reconciling, he would love to see a balance of like pursuing a relationship with someone, but also embracing who you are as a person. When it came to resentment, my therapist pointed out something that I thought was just like mind blowing. She said, you know, Kim, when you're going through a tough time with your parents and they do something that really triggers your emotions, you dehumanize them. And I'm like, what's dehumanizing and I and she explained that dehumanizing is when you don't even see them as human anymore but you see them as just something you can't you can't connect with and I learned that I just had this habit of dehumanizing them anytime they inflicted pain on me but I need to humanize them in those moments I needed to see that God created my mom and dad with loving care as he created all of us with loving care and he loves them just as much as he loves me, despite circumstances. And I've learned to accept my parents' limitations, learning that, you know, there's some things that they're not going to change about them, and I can't expect them to change. But what I have control of is to change myself and to change my mentality towards them. And I think from that, I was able to let go of some of the resentment that I held on so tightly, and I was able to taste some. I was able to just taste some of the freedom from just letting go. So from sharing with you guys tonight, you know, like where I am right now, um, it's still a long journey for me. Um, sometimes it's hard to talk to my parents. Um, and I just know that God placed this conviction in my heart and I decide to commit to it, you know, I committed to transformation of myself and also believing and trusting that God will redeem the situation that I have with my parents. Um, and I just hope that, you know, like one day the three feelings that I shared with you guys won't be those three feelings anymore, but it would be something different and in a good way. Um, there's a couple like closing remarks that I want to share with you guys, but before I do that, there is a video that I wanted to share with you guys. I think this was totally oh. unexpected. Oh. Wow. <laughs> um, so that video was created by this production company called Jubilee Project. I don't know if you guys have heard of it before. Actually, one of the guys in the project, he was part of Epic, 
but I think he was in SoCal. He was part of an epic ministry in SoCal, in case someone looked familiar in the video. Um, this video was created back in 2016, and when it first came out, it was actually really hard for me to watch. Um, oh, okay, the feels, okay. <laughs> but actually just watching it again this week, when I thought of um, sharing it with you guys, it just gave me um, some peace and hope knowing that God is constantly on the move. And I don't know how you felt when you watched that video just now and what you were thinking when it reminded you of your parents, but I hope that you will um, just allow God to meet you wherever you are um, and just to just respond to any promptings that he might be giving to you right now. You know, when it comes to broken relationships, some of them will never go back the way that they were before, and that's okay. Um, God calls us to forgive because he first forgave us, and he encourages us to reconcile, but that's not always possible. And if you don't think you're ready to reconcile right now, it's just better to shoot for um, peace and finding it in the situation. You know, peace can be formed by accepting people's limitations and not expecting more than what they are capable of. And an indicator of whether or not you have peace in your heart for this particular person who had um, given you pain in the past is by praying for them. And when you pray for them, you do a heart check afterwards and you ask, like, you ask yourself, like, was that prayer for that person? Like, was it genuine and was it from, like, a good part of my heart? See, the reality is we all experience brokenness because we live in an imperfect world and we're just all imperfect people. And whether if it's, you know, these broken relationships involve your parents or your past romantic relationships or even with friendships, um, if you've experienced brokenness in any way, I just encourage you to take the time to think through those relationships and whether or not they're still affecting you to this day are you carrying some feelings in your heart from your past um, relationships? If you are, I pray that God will just give you some clarity um, tonight in terms of just like what you can do with those feelings. And I would like to end by reading a passage from Romans 12. It's Romans 12, 9 through 21. Just as an encouragement to all of us as we seek after relationship goals this this quarter. So Romans 12, 9 through 21. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you, you are, and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. And I hope that from just reading this passage, we can all feel encouraged to just um, to just trust in God through the process and trust that God will direct your steps when you're going through a hard time, especially when it involves someone else. So let me go ahead and pray. And afterwards, there's going to be a couple of discussion questions on the screen. And... I'm not sure how you guys do discussion questions, but maybe break up into like small groups and you can just talk with your peers around you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pray. Father God, um, 
you just know where we are right now. You just see us. You know us. You love us. And I pray that wherever we are right now, in our minds or in our hearts, may you just leave us there. Um, I just pray that during this time of discussion, where we're able to just share with our brothers and sisters some of the burdens that we've carried in our hearts, may it be a time where we feel loved and known. I pray that you will just um, equip us, Father God, if we feel convicted to um, take some action steps, but we're really scared. I pray that you will just give us the courage to move forward, um, even if it's just baby steps. I pray that you will, yeah, Father God, just remind us that there's so much redemption that you have planned for us to experience. Um, and I just pray that you will just give us the strength that we need um, during times where it's really hard with either our parents or with another relationship in our lives. So I just thank you for t this evening and I lift everything up to you in your name, amen. All right, so I think there are two discussion questions. The first one is, what are some feelings that you carried in you from a hard relationship in your life? And the second question is, what action steps do you think God is placing in your heart to take when you think about that relationship? So I think they're going to allow 10 to 15 minutes to discuss, so feel free to break up to groups. Thank you.